The Jamaican reggae dancehall genre has been a vehicle for the island's popular culture for decades. Its global impact has secured the music careers of many of its practitioners and has inspired even far more to devote their lives to the pursuit of the big break. However, many have come to learn that this career path doesn't readily lead to recognition and recognition doesn't guarantee success. Young people need to recognize that a very, very small percentage of artists become super millionaires. There are many artists who can make a living on it, but they're not necessarily going to become like Michael Jackson or Justin Bieber. It's very difficult to reach that level for most people. But artists can earn uh, a living over many years if they continually refresh their product. The global music industry landscape is being transformed by rapid changes in technology, which in a few years have revolutionized the way music is made, promoted and consumed. New and familiar acts now have alternative means of showcasing their art and as such are less dependent on traditional mainstream media and major record labels to secure an audience. The industry is not what it used to be because of the development of the technology. The, the IQ factor, downloading and all of that. Uh, you can actually upload your own uh, video, YouTube and so on and so forth. And that is a way of promoting yourself. Individual unit sales of songs are down for the most part. I mean, you'll have the emergent hits that just do well, Gangnam Style, whatever it is that just does really well. But outside of that, it's again, it's performance. So, I guess in that way, the more things change, the more they stay the same. With us here in Jamaica, I actually think that we should be in a better position than some international entities because we never had those frameworks. So the big record companies that are all scratching their head and trying to figure out what to do, I mean, their formula, I know, was to invest tons of money into a few acts and see which one hits. We never really had that whole structure here. So this level playing field of the internet should mean that we should now be able to get out there and do better than we've done before. One has to progress, one has to learn, one has to be trained, one has to become an entrepreneur. One has to be at the top of the game of business. It can't, it's not just a free-for-all thing where you just look at it and say, yeah, my wife will be that, I'm going to be that. Our music business, I don't call it an industry. We have the makings of an industry, we have the components of an industry, but we don't have an industry. Our music business is separate and apart from the international music business. And we see this in so many ways, whether it is, you know, the, the standards needed for accessing the Grammy Awards, submitting music to the Grammy. And the fact is, we don't know enough about the international music industry. And so we operate, even in the context of record distribution, therefore, in a way that's below the standard of the international setting. From day one, in my perspective, what I tell persons, Jamaica is the factory, Jamaica is the source, Jamaica is the home. The market is everywhere else. So when I work with artists, that's my approach, is always to see what they're doing and which market internationally would be interested in it. And as soon as possible, figuring out how you're going to make contact with or access or tap into those markets. This presentation seeks to provide a guide to the music practitioner in the Jamaican context, mainly the performing and recording artist, hoping to break through and secure financial benefits from what is often a misunderstood and unforgiving career path. Welcome to the industry. Welcome to music, you know. Music. Music. Music, you know. Music, you know. Music, you know. I think that first of all we have, to, we have to accept that there's a little bit of magic involved in this whole busting. You know what I mean? There is, there are things that you can do to prepare yourself to be ready for when it happens or for when opportunity comes your way. But what you do to bust, I mean it's a combination of stuff. I, I, I always like to say that it's important to have a strong team around you. Um, and to have a quality, quality product. Those are the two things that I think are essential. A strong team and a quality product. So if you have a quality product that will last forever, look at Bob, 
scatter lights, etc. A strong team means an attorney or somebody who's looking at legal stuff for you. It means a manager who is able to seek out opportunities for you. Talent, you have to have that. Determination, you have to have that. Um, self, uh, um, a belief in self, a faith in self, and self-motivation. These are very important. And, and with that, you have to practice. Practice, practice, and more practice. Practice and practice. Um, that is how you are going to develop your character. That's how you are going to develop your skill. That, uh, that is how you are going to have command over your voice. Uh, that is how you are, you are going to be able to, to, to develop a type of quality that people would want to buy into. Uh, you are simultaneously checking out those in the music industry who have the know-how, right? People who have skills and knowledge and experience of mastering, of, 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 of singing, of DJing, uh, uh, booking, uh, distribution, all of these things. Understanding that this thing, you know, take a lot and you know, before you, before you start this journey, you have to really um, just have the right sort of goods, you know. And, and, and when I say, I'm talking about the other things that will complement your talent, the discipline and the job that it will take. So that's the first thing. If, if, you, if you're going to give up on this thing easy, well, don't bother ever start. Because, you know, it takes a lot.